make it harder for you to be negative. One hundred. You have somebody that's always positive, even yeah. when it can be annoying. They can still <laughs> just be like, "Oh man, when you stop with the positivity," but it, it makes you inherently just be you know more positive than you were prior to that. So. Welcome everybody to Lions Den, episode twenty six. Uh, again, my name's Eddie, and this is Daryl. I'm Brad. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. I want to get as many people uh, as we possibly can, getting some positive vibes, positive energy. Um, I do want to make a note, anybody who has listened to Don't Kill Spiders <laughs> podcast, I think it was episode 24. 24, yes. Um, I'm looking at a tarantula on my floor. And That's when great. I walked in the basement, I walked into about five spider webs. So I will let you know at Lion's Den, we do practice what we preach. True. Because that m- might eat me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> it's pretty oh, huge. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. pretty damn big. So it cool. hasn't moved, so it might not be yeah. with us anymore. But They're good at that. Next time you look, you'll be both. <laughs> we, yeah. we do practice what we preach here at Lion's Den. Um Today, we want to talk about, so last episode definitely talked about, you know, anger being a parasite. This kind of goes in line with that. Um, We've kind of touched about it a little bit in in the past, and it's really what Lion's Den is about, um, is finding your pride. Mm -hmm. And what we mean by that is finding your group of people, Mm -hmm. you know, the people that are your, your family, be it blood, be it adopted family, be it great friends. Um, I cannot emphasize how important it is and we'll kind of get into the multitude of ways that it's important, but finding your pride is such an an important thing. And, and I think it kind of goes undercover a lot because everybody has their pride. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their clique of people, group of people they hang out with. Um, seeing where a lot of people are at with them. I don't know um, if you're really looking at the group that you're in and, you know, the effects that it has on you. Um, I think a lot of times I know, you know, when I was younger, times I've been a troublemaker in my life, I found my pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you will. And um, it might come as shocking. They were also troublemakers (laughs) in Stirring shit up. <laughs> um, you know, you seem to to reap what you sow. So mm-hmm. when you're in, in a particular mindset, that kind of becomes your pride. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're sad and depressed, you're going to find sad and depressed people to hang mm-hmm. out with. Mm-hmm. Like magnets, yeah. For sure. If you're a happy-go-lucky person, you're going to find happy-go-lucky people to hang out with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's kind of funny, you know, you remember all those little cliques in high school. You know, it doesn't change as you get older. No, it doesn't. Um, I don't think it's as appearance driven jocks Mm -hmm. or goths or any of that but i do think it's very emotionally driven Mm -hmm. you know you kind of find people who are emotionally in the same place you are mentally in the same place you are yeah and for this for lion's den what i really want to what we really want to express is don't do that You know, get different types, get different people. Mix it up. Mix it up. I mean, look at it as almost like a survivalist. Talked about last episode how much I'm enjoying alone, which is a bad example because they don't have no pride. They're by themselves. But um, you really want a little mixture of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, You want that artistic person. You want that creative person. You want that culinary person. You know, you might have a depressed one in there, and that's okay because the other lines in the pride are going to pick them up. Um, because when you do that, you open yourself to so many more experiences. You know, I look at us, and not just in the lines, then, I mean, our pride is bigger than us four. We all have other friends that, you know, we, we're all close with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just notice a lot. You know, Bill, Danny, Danny's somebody who, you know, I've gotten a lot closer with over the last couple months. And, you know, it's just grateful to meet the guy. 
<laughs> always happy. Always seems to be in a good mood. Yeah, so very yeah. happy go lucky. Um, and people like that are really important. And actually, we did talk about it on one of the podcasts in the past. But it's so important to have people like that in your life because they just bring a, a much different dynamic. Yeah, and they make it harder for you to be negative. One hundred. You have somebody that's always positive, even yeah. when it can be annoying. They can still. <laughs> Just be like, oh man, when you stop with the positivity, but it, it makes you inherently just be, you know, more positive than you were prior to that. So it's good to have those people around. Definitely. Yeah. And and you know, it's not to say I certainly understand the comfort of having all like-minded people around because there is a comfort to that. I mean, and that's a nice, comfortable pride. Nobody's really pushing boundaries. Nobody's really uh, making you too uncomfortable. You know, the problem with that is exactly that. Nobody's doing that. Exactly. So you're not growing. You're not evolving. Um, things become very tunnel vision. Kind of doing this. It's like eating. I mean, cheeseburgers are delicious. Mm -hmm. I love them. I don't want to eat it three times a day, every, every day, day for the rest of my life. Yeah. Right. And it's kind of the equivalent of that. It just kind of becomes that. I mean, when I think about... The people that I'm around, the people in our pride, all the different things that, you know, I kind of get exposed to that might not have done before, um, you know, it amazes me. And I'm just eternally grateful for it. You know, I don't know what you guys think about that. No, I, exact same uh, opinion on that. I'm grateful for having all the different people and people with differences. I think that's probably where I got some of the best friends that I have. Um, came from differences and not like um, commonalities that we mm -hmm. shared. And uh, because I like to learn from people and from things and experiences, and I hope that friends and people learn things from me as well. So I see it the same way as you, is you have to have some some differences um, in, your, in your pride because if you don't, it's hard for you to experience new things because mm -hmm. we just like the same thing. It's that cheeseburger mm -hmm. every day. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, recently, my wife and I had the opportunity to actually sit down with an, I own a business, my wife owns her own business, uh, sit down with another couple that own their own business and they're, they're doing great things and they're, they're drastically um, growing their business. And it was interesting to sit down with them, have a nice meal, talk, hang out, um, afterwards, you just realize it, it's unique. You kind of have a unique mindset when you own your own business. There's a lot of, you feel alienated and isolated. And um, for the most part, we kind of work by ourselves. So it, it's very difficult. But it was nice to have that kind of, to talk with people that understood, but were insanely driven. Mm -hmm. So after hanging out with them, it was like, oh, it made me feel more driven for my business because it's like I almost needed to match their yeah, energy. Like inspired yes. you, right? Yes, and um, and it, it was it was truly like an eye opener of like oh you know like not that you necessarily it, to be blunt like want to use people but you realize like people bring different things to the table and when you, you know you have a interaction with somebody like that that makes you feel like more driven or more focused mm -hmm. it's really eye-opening you know and then in turn you're like well maybe i can do this for somebody else so, absolutely you know then it becomes kind of this chain reaction kind of thing of of um you know everybody's kind of growing you know definitely so, yeah and i mean with lines done i mean there's a bunch of reasons why we picked the name you know first episode kind of explained that but mm -hmm. you know lions are one of the few animals that have that pride Mm -hmm. You know, they're one of the few animals that have a lot of other lions in their pride. You know, most animals could be solitary and stuff like that. So when we talk about that, there's there's a real reason why we pick that. Um, lion's Den in general, I mean, we're doing this to get bigger and bigger and bigger and expand, expand, expand. You know, the hopes are that you start your thing or you're motivated to meet like-minded people or and it's not even so much about and when i say like-minded i mean in spirit mm -hmm. you know somebody that's on that journey somebody that's on on that search mm -hmm. you know they're looking for something different they're looking to be to your point brad inspired mm -hmm. you know it's like you were saying daryl something different 
um, other than the mundane of every day. And again, we're so susceptible to want that comfort. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're doing that, you just, you want to be with those people that they aren't, you know, pushing your boundaries. They aren't testing you. They're not bringing new ideas They're And, and again, comfort, just like a delicious cheeseburger. It's not, it's something that initially starts good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it becomes bad when it's the same thing over and over again. And I mean, an example of that would be you're depressed. So you find somebody else that, so when you're depressed, I've been there. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want to be around is sunny, super happy, mm -hmm. best look out. You know, they have the best view of the world. You know, don't worry, everything's going to be, you want to choke that person. Mm -hmm. right. So I certainly get it. Um, that, and you want that person that you're going to talk to that, you know, might not be happy, go lucky and don't necessarily have to be depressed, but they're kind of on that. They're like maybe that one step, two steps above mm -hmm. where they're empathizing with you and, oh, that's terrible. And, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, cause that gives you comfort. The danger in that is you end up in that rut. Because mm -hmm. nobody's really pushing you to to go beyond that, right? Yeah, no, I agree with that. That's um, when you said uh, you want somebody like minded, but not like I uh, like the same thing as you. I think the right. same thing as you. I think for me, like minded is a process. I want somebody to look at things at the same process as me or similar, but we don't have to come to the same conclusion on everything, right? You know. So we take in information the same way or close enough, and then how we process that information or whatever it is will still be in, uh, uh, specific to each of us. And then we can discuss it. And then I think that makes like your, your pride a lot better. And that's what I look for in friends and just anybody that I'm going to give uh, um, exposure to my energy and, their, and vice versa. Because anytime we hang with somebody, you're exposed. If they're in a bad mood, you're either trying to make them in a better mood or you're picking up on that bad mood and taking it with you. So it's that transfer of energy with the people that you spend time with. So I'm very selective about that mm -hmm. because I want somebody who is, I'm going to benefit from their energy and then they can also benefit from mine and we can complement each other uh, like we do here in the Lions Den. Sure. You know, Definitely. so it's always that kind of. Uh, Situation, not even purposely. I'm not doing like any. I don't have a list or anything or that I go by. It's just really a feeling of whether I like this person's presence, and if I do, then I want to continue to hang with this person, right? And have more discussions with them. And then there's people who don't give you that vibe, and it's hard for me to progress it more. We all know somebody like that, for sure. You know, and um, but finding your pride. That's how I go about mine. You know. I look at that person if it's there if we vibe well I want to you know either to be more so merge not so bring them in like you know like now come over here to my right, stuff right. just kind of merge equally into a pride and then be you know prosperous together like that mm -hmm. um, I think I've talked about it before you know when I kind of went through you know some of my darker times like you know the people I was hanging out with they on the surface, good people, mm -hmm. you know, um, but definitely weren't beneficial for me. You know, at the time you don't really know it because you're kind of just looking for a distraction. And it's really what it ended up being. Um, but it was almost to the point of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it, it kind of ended up going down a path that truly wasn't me going out a lot you know, partying, having a good time, but it was just this massive distraction. It kind of became, you know, really like you're working for the distraction of the weekend. And uh, it, it didn't benefit me because it would distract me in that moment. But then come Monday, you're back to reality. You're back in that rut. And then it becomes this rut of you work your Monday through Friday. And then, oh, what clubs are we going to hit? What are we going right. to shows we're going to go to? You know, like, you're not growing as a person. You're just kind of existing, mm -hmm. you know, and 
you're existing and then you're looking for those distractions. It, it, it wasn't, wasn't really beneficial. Um, and, and then it kind of started to break away from that and then got to talking with, you know, people that were a lot more beneficial would ask questions and, you know, Hey man, how you doing? What's going on? And, right. you know, and then you start, Oh, okay. You know, like you, you start realizing like these people have my best interest at mind. These people, maybe not so much, you know, for so, sure. You know, it's just kind of an important, it's almost like checks and balances as mm -hmm. you kind of make your way through life and, and the people you hang out with. It's, you know, like you said, you know, when you were younger, you kind of got into some, you know, definitely shenanigans and, and found people doing the same thing that probably really didn't have your best interest in mind because they were, you know, doing shady stuff. So, and, and, and I think to your, to your point, um, it, there's nothing malicious in it whatsoever. No. It's just, they don't have their own best interests in mind. I was just about to say yeah. that, you know, yeah. it was just, it was a commonality yeah. in, Hey, we're angry. We're pissed. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hurting. And there was such a brotherhood in that. And there was such a, a comfortability in that mm -hmm. because we all, we had our back come at each other's back come hell or high water. Mm -hmm. You know, you definitely had that connection. And that's, that's really why I thought it was such an important thing to talk about. We waited a long time actually to talk about it, but there's a lot of facets to Alliance Pride. You know, I've met a lot of people who are very close, mm -hmm. will kill for each other, die for each other, but aren't good for each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that's, I mean? That and that's, that's kind of what I was of, trying to say. It's yeah, exactly I was about to say in my younger days, that's kind of like the crowd I was in. I don't think they none of them didn't have yeah, my malicious. best. Yeah, mm -hmm. they weren't malicious. They didn't have my best interest. They did not not have my best interest in hand. They, you know, if that if it was something that was going to benefit me, they would support it. But nobody had anybody's best interest. Mm -hmm. uh, interest uh, was it wasn't even a thought that we were just doing what we were doing mm -hmm. and living in the moment. Just like going to clubs, it's like if you really think about it, clubbing. It's nothing really positive out of that. <laughs> no, right. there's nothing no, that you. Do. It's, it's nothing that makes you grow. No, you know. No. And I clubbed a lot in my younger days, and there's nothing that it's not like any kind of. It doesn't take any kind of skill. It's just no. you go there, you live in the moment, and We're then drinking a lot. You know, drink, so you, you yeah. add that whole element into it, and it really. Man. There's no real conversation. Everything's no. superficial. Mm -hmm. you, you, know? you don't remember much of it the next yeah. day. Yeah. So it's the same thing where it's those, those, it, they're both superficial things. Right. That crowd yep. you run with when you're younger and you guys are just out there mm -hmm. doing crazy mess and going to the club. It's the same. It's all superficial stuff. And when you're trying to, trying to get into a pride or create a pride mm -hmm. or find your pride, however you're going about it, it can't be on that superficial level. It has to be something with some meat and potatoes to it sure. to actually, you know, benefit you internally. And that's one of the things you should look for when you're starting to find your pride. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, mm -hmm. no, I mean, I think it's so important. I, I and you know, in, in anyone who's listening to this, you know, I'm, it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at points in my life and, and I've always been blessed where I've had, a great friend, a great couple friends. Never was, was a big group guy anyways. Um, but even looking back on that, having that one or two just wonderful, great friends kind of enclosed me to expanding beyond that where it actually becomes a pride. It was almost like a mate, mm -hmm. you know, or a partner in crime, and you want to keep everybody else out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of reasons, um, you know, not, not people not knowing my business, stuff I'm up to, all that type of stuff. But, you know, even looking at that as as my pride has expanded, I look at all the different things that have kind of come my way as far as interests, things I would normally not do, foods I would normally not try, places I would normally not go to. Um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And kind of to the point we were talking about earlier, none of it is ever about maliciousness. It's about they're not in that same. I mean, I've had friends that I was extremely close to that our evolutions just went in different directions. That's, yeah, that's natural. There was nothing bad. There was not like mm -hmm. there was some big falling out. It was just couldn't connect on 
that same evolution scale. And yep. my point is, in your pride, you're really looking for, in a good pride, in my opinion, is you want different people at different places of that because mm -hmm. that's kind of where it becomes a pride of lions where everybody has a job everybody has a place in there yes everybody has you know something to bring to that pride and it doesn't have to be the same thing you don't have to be the big guru know-it-all guy and hey that's my value it could be you know we talk about where we all are at in our faiths you know it's funny that we're kind of talking about it, it a lot of a lot of the feedback I get a lot of times with us for Lions Den is, man, you guys kind of need to bring a disruptor in there. You guys mm -hmm. all kind of agree on the same stuff and that person to create the friction. And I'm like, you know, we don't agree on everything. I was just about to say, we a don't. A lot of things we, have a lot of differences. we don't agree on. Hmm. The difference is because we're a pride, we respect the fact that that's a different opinion. Mm -hmm. That's how you feel. So I'm going to hear it out. We're going to hear it out. Mm -hmm. We're either going to agree or disagree. But we always know there's no bad intention in there. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have, we ain't going to be sitting there and saying, F you, Brad, you don't <laughs> right. know what the hell. Exactly. Because right. there, there's a respect there. There's a pride there. Sure. And we also understand that we're all in different places in our life, different experiences. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's, it's a really crucial part of, of having a pride. Yeah, and the thing with us is, is the style of conversation that we have. So even when we do disagree with, on something, it's still a conversation. Mm -hmm. So if your point is different from mine, I listen to your point. And the same if your point is different from mine, I listen to yours, and, it, and it's returned, and uh, vice versa. And when people want us to have a disruptor, they want that person that is going to be just uh, fixed on whatever their point is mm -hmm. and argumentative. You wouldn't. I mean, I don't think they would be here. It's hard to be in this atmosphere, mm -hmm. but you'll get eaten up. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it wouldn't work. But that's what they see on. It's a lot of. That's a lot of uh, like O'Reilly Factor and stuff yeah. like that. You hardball. Know, hardball. Yeah. That's a. That's a style of uh, uh, news and delivery and conversation. Entertainment. Entertainment wise, mm -hmm. that people have brought. Stephen A. does. That's his entire sports uh, commentary is argumentative, loud, yelling, not really listening to one another. Right. They come up with the points that they want to say before the show, mm -hmm. and then they shout them at each other and for 50 minutes, and then it goes off and they can do it again next week. And that's not the lion's den. That's not what... No. <laughs> we actually have conversations here, and we, try, we don't really do like the uh, shenanigans. Well, and I think that's such... One, I think it's ironic that that's what people are looking for, to mm -hmm. your point. And that's really why, because mm -hmm. we've learned... We've lost the ability to have discussions and have points and counterpoints without screaming at each other. Yes. Right. So now when people see discussions like this, they're like, ah, you know, they get along too well and they agree with yeah. each other on right. everything. And because we're not screaming at each other about yeah. how you're wrong or whatever. I mean, if you kind of go through our episodes, there's definitely been things we've disagreed on. Mm -hmm. And we discussed it. But it's it. We very about fluid. Yeah. And nobody's getting heated or hot because there's no reason to. Right. You well, know, we all know that we have best intentions in it for each other. We're all open to each other's point of view. We have enough respect for each other to know that, hey, Daryl, if that's the way you feel, I know you're a great guy. So there's validity to that mm -hmm. for you. Might not be for me, but I know there is for you. So I respect that. You know, we're really missing that in this country. We're missing that with dialogue. We're missing that in conversation because they just everything is an email, a text say, message, yeah. yes. a tic tac. It's, Unfortunately, Alex isn't here for his tic tacs. It's, uh, it's up for, you know, it's all just letters. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the emphasis is brought on by the reader. So, you know, you never know what, you know. The, the context of it, I guess, Correct. is the word I'm looking for. And, and yeah, it's the age we live in. Whereas yeah. we have conversation, you can hear the deflection and the, oh, that's a good point. And there's a lot of times we, there's stuff we disagree on and then, you know, we talk about it and I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. that's it's a different way to different see way it. To look at yeah. it. I get it though, you know? And even if it is a disagreement, it's a good point. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. You it's know, okay. it's a very valid point. It's, I still not how I feel about it, but mm -hmm. man, I, I didn't see that one coming. Good point. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I noticed uh, since we've been doing this 
is that, I mean, I knew it before, but I had a direct look at it uh, with us doing our podcast, is like friction sales, negativity sales. Um, and by, by sales, I mean it gets views, it gets people to listen to mm -hmm. what you have to say. So um, when you go on YouTube and you look up something new that just came out, it could be a new phone, a new bike. I look at a lot of motorcycle stuff. Mm -hmm. And when a new bike comes out, a lot of videos say, five things I hate about this new bike. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I'll click on it, and there will be zero things that person hated about it. But they just wanted to get you to click on it. Mm -hmm. It'll be huge. It'll yeah. be on the, the, what do you call it? First the picture. title. The title mm -hmm. picture. Mm -hmm. The title and the title picture. It'll be five things I hate about this bike. And I watched it. And it's not just one time that this has happened. And I'm like, okay, so that's a trend. You make it seem like you're going to hate on this, and then you give it an honest review. And But that's what gets you to click on it. For sure. Because you're like, damn, what, they hated it? It's new. How do you hate it? <laughs> you know? So we're going to call this five things I hate about my friend? <laughs> yes. Well, it's, <laughs> yo, it would, it would blow up. <laughs> good I idea. hate these people. Right. Good right. idea. And they show us pointing at each other. <laughs> people are like, I don't know what that's about, but let me click it. Uh -huh. you know? Watch. Just check that out. If you get if you're bored, do it while you're listening to this. Just look at something mm -hmm. and say, hey, uh, it is. Five things I hate about this. Ten things, you know. Wow. The worst thing they did with this year's lineup. This all negative. I'm mean, to that point. I mean, you're right. Everything is negative driven. And again, and when we talked about it in the last episode, yeah. that anger, that hurt, spite, depression, anxiety, all these things, we're looking to feed that where you're comfortable instead of addressing it and, and you know, trying to change that, evolve that, make it mm -hmm. better. You know, we're we're constantly looking for that blanket instead of oh shit, why is it so cold in here? Is the door open? Mm -hmm. You know, right. is there a draft somewhere? Yeah. Is a window cracked? We're just looking for that immediate comfort instead of that evolution, that growing. Mm -hmm. You know, which inevitably comes in when you start to adapt more. You know, all of us. I mean, we're kind of coming into in Chicago. We're coming into the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you get that first like 55, 56 mm -hmm. degree weather, you're like, oh, yes. shit, it's cold. Mm -hmm. Come December, 55, we'll be out there in shorts and T-shirts. Yeah, that's right. a summer day. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. that's kind of what happens when, when you adapt and, and evolve. The problem is in your pride, if, if you're never having those seasons, if you're never having those changes, if you're never having those people to push you, um, look, help you expand. You're just kind of stuck in that that spot. Mm -hmm. You know, you're stuck in that spot of just pure comfort, mm -hmm. not really evaluating anything, not looking to really grow, adjust. All you're looking for is just to f feel okay about where you're at with whatever it may be. And we see that constantly. I know that with people that are violent. I know that with people that are big drinkers. I know that people who do drugs. I know that people who are sleeping with everything that walks. And as I'm going through this, think about the people you know do any one of those things. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, they're hanging out with each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's always mm -hmm. the same people. And that is not a coincidence. That is those people picking that pride. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Um, it, it's quality over quantity for me, you know? Definitely. Um, you know, the lines then in general is about kind of almost preaching growth to people and, and bringing spirituality to people. Um, this is a perfect example of that. You know, your, your friend group, those people you associate yourself with or, or that closest to you, they should help you grow. They should help you, you know, not be stagnant, you know, should help you, you know, chase dreams and goals and and help you along that path um if the people that you're surrounded with currently aren't doing that for you then those are the wrong people definitely that's really and for anybody who's looking to build a pride 
I'll tell you, you know, from personal experience, as as you start to, you have one, two, three. Once you start to get in the majority of, let's say, you want positive people around you, you want people that, or you want inspirational people, mm -hmm. it starts to kind of manifest itself. Yes. Where the new lines that are kind of coming in that pride, it almost becomes the expectation. Mm -hmm. So even if they're not quite there, they're kind of moving towards that because that's what that pride mm -hmm. is. They know that if, and let's be honest, at the end of the day, nobody wants to be around a bunch of sad, miserable, going nowhere people. That's not anybody's wish. Um, we more kind of fall in those traps. It's not that that's what we were seeking out. Now, I think subconsciously we're seeking that out, mm -hmm. but it's not, that's not the initial attention. And when, because I even look at us, I mean, when we started this, Brad and I were very close. Mm -hmm. I knew Daryl and I were close. Alex and I were close. Mm -hmm. You know, Alex and Daryl definitely knew each other for, you know, a little bit mm -hmm. and did some stuff. Nobody really knew. And even through this, mm -hmm. because Daryl goes, well, I know Eddie's solid. He ain't going to bring anybody who's a goofball. Mm -hmm. Meets you and goes, oh, yeah, see? Yeah. Brad's a great guy. And kind of same thing with Danny. You know, I know Daryl's a great guy. He ain't going to be, he's not going to be hanging out with somebody who doesn't have anything of value. Yeah, me and Danny were hanging a lot. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. You guys were golfing and close. And when I met him, because Danny was somebody who was in my peripheral, he was in my environment. Mm -hmm. It's just not somebody I really had an opportunity to talk to about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there was any like, oh my God, I need to talk to him type thing. Mm -hmm. A lot because of my position. But when I met him, I was like, oh, this makes total sense. Great guy, mm -hmm. super upbeat, made total sense. And I think as you bring those people into your pride, that's kind of what happens because they're bringing their people. Yep. Those people are bringing their people. And then you find your pride getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. The whole point of this Lions Den is exactly that. You know, the 75 subscribers we have become 150. 150 becomes three. Three becomes 1,000. 1,000 becomes, and so on and so forth, of spreading positive, upbeat, faith-driven um, spirituality. That's it. That's dead on. <laughs> like you develop your pride and then people start to come into their pride and they already will fit in because they're going to come from people who already mm -hmm. were within the Definitely. pride. That's the design of it. It just does it by itself. Um, and I like it when it's more natural. I've never been like a big club person. Not club, like club scene. I'm talking like a group like like lodge, club, yeah. fraternity, and stuff like that. Right, right. I believe in fraternal, like like brotherhood, sisterhoods, and stuff like that. But I don't like when it's so organized that it has a name and a checklist to qualify and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like at that point, people begin to make themselves mm -hmm. what those requirements are mm. to get inside of that because of whatever it offers. And they're truly not people who probably fit into that specific pride, mm -hmm. you know, but you put the qualifications out there mm -hmm. and now they start to, you know, develop. If you just go and you, in a natural setting, place yourself around these people, you either be accepted or you won't, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And because who you are will either mesh well with them or they will mesh well with who you are mm -hmm. and both sides can determine if that's where you want to be, you know? Definitely. So that's why I don't know, like, I, because I used to, when I was in college, they tried to recruit me into several fraternities. And I was always like, ah, it looks cool and I'm, I'm good. Right. You know? Yeah, I'll come yeah. hang out. Yeah, I'll come, yeah, I did. Both of my roommates were Kappas. And I would invite me over to their parties and stuff like that, let me in with them and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is nice. Definitely. You know? Oh, when you go go and you go pledge. Nah, well, never thought about it. Mm. You should. And I think that happens a lot of times if you don't have that foundational family yep. or friends yeah. that, you know, because you have that sense of wanting to belong to something, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. sense of wanting to be, you know, a part of it. It's like motorcycle clubs. Yep. Kind of same. Same. Same thing. Same. You know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of, I know if you had 
experience with that. So, you know, and again, it's that sense of, hey, these guys Mm -hmm. are good guys. And and especially with that, you know, I know with gangs, stuff like that, that that sense of family, that connection is so addictive because you're around people that are like, they'll do anything Mm -hmm. for you. And when you feel that, you know, I know for me, when I was younger, you know, it was an all black gang. Mm -hmm. And there was another brother that made a comment to me about being white. It was 20 brothers beating the ever living shit out of them for it. And when you feel that connection Mm -hmm. of, you know, despite my color, despite my background, I have that that connection. It's it's extremely addictive, mm-hmm. and you know, that's a good thing. That's that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing. It's just where the overall pride direction is going is where it gets sketchy. Yes, when it gets dangerous. That was my issue, and it's funny you mentioned that because at the time I was definitely on the outs with family. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was. This welcoming thing, sure, like, yes, oh, sense of belonging, great, family, you know? definitely, and and all of those things you talk about, it, like, yeah, this is awesome. But then you see the their main goal, and you're like, nah, right? Maybe I don't need to be involved in this, yeah, you know? for sure. Um, and they but, may not see anything wrong with no. that main goal. Mm-mm. You know, again, it's not about malicious. It's not like people are trying to drag you down or, oh, you know, mm-hmm. I want to bring Daryl to do this horrible shit because I'm a shitty person. I want him to be a shitty person. You know, a lot of times they don't see it that way. Mm-hmm. That's why they're doing it. Yep. Or they don't want to see it that way. And that's kind of the point with the pride is it's that when you have a strong pride, it's that, let's say, the three of us are going to do something stupid, and it's Alex going, hey, guys, are you sure that's the best decision? And because it's a pride, we respect them, and we go, well, why do you say that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's up? And you kind of talk it out, and right. we might go, shit, you're right. That was right. dumb. Why were we thinking about doing that? Right. You know, when you don't have that dynamic that's where it becomes dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's where it becomes negative. Mm -hmm. That's where it becomes where you're not evolving, you're not growing. Um, And I mean, we see that constantly. Mm -hmm. I think too, if, if you, if you set your bar, you know, if you know, you know, deep down in your head, there's a direction, there's somewhere you want to go in life, you set your bar. um, You know, if you just kind of follow you know, like for me, I, you know, I did a lot of, I go do a lot of stuff in the city by myself. You know, I was going through a lot of stuff. I was like, ah, mm-hmm. you know, I really like music. So I go to shows by myself. Uh, and people are always like, it's crazy, man. Why, you know, find a friend or whatever. I was like, well, nobody really wants to listen to the stuff that I listen to. So, but when you go and you do this stuff, then you meet like-minded people mm-hmm. that are into this stuff. And then they're like, hey, man, well, if you like this. Go check this out. Right. Go check this, you know, club Definitely. out. Or check this band out. And then, you know, then that your pride then kind of naturally progresses and grows. Yes. No, you're hundred uh, percent right. You know, same thing with the motorcycle stuff. You Definitely. know, like you, you find guys that are into these kind of bikes or whatever and um, you know, like I do some stuff, the chopper scene, the van scene, like you find guys that are into that and then they have events, you go to the events, you meet Definitely. friends you meet and people. Yeah. it grows and yeah. You know, yeah, that's a lot to how this pride kind of came together, if you think about it. Because mm-hmm. I know the three of us here, and a little bit with Alex, too, uh, don't mind doing things by by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, my mom always talks about that. Like, I would go everywhere by myself mm-hmm. if I had an interest in whatever it is. And mm-hmm. I'm still like that now. I used to go to the movies by myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if I didn't know anybody else interested in seeing the movie, that doesn't mean I'm not going to go see it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That just means I'm going to go see it, and it's going to be cheaper. Yeah, early right. on, I, I had somebody say, you know, I was like, oh, so-and-so's in town. I really want to go see him, but I don't have anybody to go with. And somebody was like, just fucking go. Yeah, man. just go. I'm like, what do you, why do you want to wait for somebody? Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, right. You Sometimes know, people don't even think yeah, about it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, 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 I can get a car and go. Yeah, right. And and it's a game changer. It yeah. really is. We were just talking about you going camping and stuff. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> That's the one thing Bill like. He's like, who's with you when you go? I'm like, nobody. Yeah. I just go and set my tent up, and then what do you do? I will read my book, mm-hmm. I write my book, I'll, I'll whatever, whatever I want, because mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm it's just me, right? right. I yeah. do exactly whatever I want in the moment. I take a nap, mm-hmm. 
You know, it just depends on whatever I want to do. And then, you know, I, I enjoy it. But then when you go and do that, we go camping together. It's the same thing now. We're just doing it. Yeah, different a, experience. Yeah. Yeah. Both have value. Both yep. are great. You know, mm-hmm. different experience. And, you know, to your point, you're 100% right. Actually, that's when I laughed. That was a couple of weeks ago. I actually think it was before I went out of town. I was BSing with Danny. I was kind of thinking... You know, I'm cool with more people than I've ever been in my life. Like, there's more people that I've talked to at yeah. one time. Because, again, I've always been kind of the loner guy to kind of have one, two really solid guys yeah. in group settings. I'm cool with everybody. It's not like I had any problems with anybody. It's not like I had any problem fitting in. Mm-hmm. But trusting, I got one or two guys. The rest, they're there. They're cool. But these are my guys. Mm-hmm. Um I've ex- seen that expand more now than I've yeah. ever had. It's it's almost like an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, I mean, when uh, you and I first started talking, like you, re- you know, it was when you lived in the city, like right. It was like a very small, you count them on one hand, you know, definitely names that you would bring up just in conversation. You know, there weren't a whole lot of people in right in your group. And now, you know, I look at you. Yeah. You got uh, right. Okay. <laughs> and, and I will say that because of different points in my life different prides fit yep. mm-hmm. because kind of to 100%. our point we're always trying to find that thing that you connect with that mm-hmm. comfortability um you know all those things so i think i'm the most evolved i've been in my life so mm-hmm. now i'm the most open to all those things yep. i don't need just that one thing or that thing or you know i'm open to all those different avenues and i also think I have a much more lust for, I don't so much want comfortability. I want experience now. Yep. I want new avenues. I want new things to try. I want new places to go, you know, all that type of stuff. Whereas in my past, I've wanted, you know, comfort, safe. Mm-hmm. Um, and and what I will say within this conversation, loyal to me is so paramount. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. It's so important to me. And in the different avenues that we're talking about, be it gangs, anything violent, gangs, motorcycle clubs, especially with the service, that when you have that that loyalty in that, that's where you really get blind. Yes. You know, because it's like, like there's times I brought, you know, a friend to meet another friend and they're like, what are you doing with that guy? Mm-hmm. I'm like, that guy will kill or die for me in, in, yep. a, in a New York minute. Mm-hmm. And that had so much value to me because it was heartfelt. Yeah. And that's the friend that's so hard to move from. That's the guy that's so hard to pull from your pride because there's so much loyalty there that you don't really want to ask yourself that question. And yes, this person will do anything for me. They'll kill their life for me. They'll do whatever. Mm. But are they healthy for me in the sense of am I moving forward? Am I evolving? Mm -hmm. Or is that person an anchor for me? You know, where they're bringing me back to those things Mm -hmm. that aren't healthy for me, aren't good decisions for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and you'll see that a lot in a lot of stuff we're talking about. People that drink a lot, people Mm -hmm. that are doing drugs, people that are going to clubs a lot. Because when you kind of become that person who's... Uh, you know what? I don't want to really want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. You find out real quick where those other people yep. are. The one that's hard, so that's easy. You know, screw them. I'm, I don't want to hang out with these people anymore. Right. The one that's hard is the one that still wants to do that, but still has that loyalty to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. it is. You know, so when you're creating or t- when we're talking about a pride, that's the one that is, in my experience, the hardest. Um, they're very loyal. They're, it's not like they're trying to drag you down. Right. It's just they can't go beyond that. Right. And it's kind of to, I know we talked about quite a few episodes of when Jesus goes to Peter, get behind me, devil. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm moving forward. Mm-hmm. And I would say if that's, it doesn't matter if it's a relationship, if it's a friend, if it's a marriage, if it's mm-hmm. a job, if even if that best interest is there, if that's keeping you from moving forward, you have to move forward. Yep. And what will happen in a strong pride is that individual is either going to grow with that Mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I have to reevaluate. That's, I love that person. I care about that person. Whatever the dynamic might be, 
I want to move with that person. Mm -hmm. That's what forces that growth. Yep. And that's really what's so uncomfortable for everybody, why they find those comfortable prides. That's true. Yeah. You know, I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add to it. No, I hit my points. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel good. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in. Um, you know, again, find your pride. Um, a lot of these discussions we're having are just kind of showing a dynamic of a healthy discussion. Mm -hmm. There's not much you don't have to feel comfortable, you know, talking about. And you honestly, you'd be really surprised how open people are. Anyways, I, there are stone gangsters that I've asked, are, are you okay, man? Mm -hmm. No, I'm fine, I'm fine. You don't look so fine. Mm -hmm. And you get that moment of break of realness mm -hmm. yeah. and then it all comes out and there's such gratitude with that. So you'd be surprised, man. Everybody got some shit going on. Don't, do not be fooled. Yes. Yeah. And find your pride. But I uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Yeah.